at the, the ten do list, a lot of people are already using Fishbowl inventory. But for those of you who are only using QuickBooks, I just wanted to give you a few reasons you might want to consider upgrading from um, QuickBooks to Fishbowl inventory. Slide. Okay. Um, in Fishbowl, we have a real world, world workflow that takes into account time. In QuickBooks, for example, Component, everything's a component until it's instantly a finished product. So Fishbowl allows for the time that it takes to actually move inventory and what have you. Next. Okay, it also keeps the, makes the responsibility for inventory squarely with operations and it keeps operations completely out of the financial statements. Next. And it improves the daily integrity. In QuickBooks, one of the weaknesses and one of the assets is you can change anything at any time. Um, with Fishbowl, once a transaction is completed, it does not allow deletion or editing of the transaction. And we also have true lot number, serial number, and expiration date tracking and control. Next. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Caroline. Hey guys, it's Caroline. Thanks for that, Jeannie. And I think one of the things that, you know, obviously as a shipping solution, one of the things that um, Starship is able to take advantage of the most is the idea that there's package level information um, on the, within the uh, Fishbowl inventory solution. So you can literally define items in boxes and you can pull that directly into your shipping system to reduce the amount of data entry and make your shipping process more efficient. So, let's see here, I'm going to show my screen. Can you guys see Fishbowl okay? Yes. Thanks, Adrian. So um, this is my Fishbowl um, solution here. I have a couple shipments, and I'm basically going to minimize this so we can go into Starship and process one of these shipments, and you can see the workflow. So this is the Starship user interface that you're looking at right now. Uh, this is a multi-carrier, multi-mode shipping solution that's going to directly integrate into your Fishbowl inventory system. Um, we're going to um, access your shipments directly. So if I hit this Browse button here, going to show me that list of shipments um, in real time that I have available to me. I can pick one of those and Starship's going to pull in the information. It's going to pull both the header, the item, and the package level detail directly from Fishbowl. So in the, over here in this upper left hand pane is going to be pretty much your header level information, uh, the Fishbowl shipment number, how we translated the ship via billing type, um, sender, which would be you, as well as the recipient, which is the ship two on the shipment. If you take a look at the bottom of this shipment, or um, my area here, I'm going to expand my packages. So these were the two boxes that were defined on the fishbowl shipment. If I go in here and expand these, you'll see that these are the items that were also in fishbowl. So Starship pulls all of that in. Um, the shipper now no longer really needs to go through and create separate boxes. Um, you can and you still do have access to um, information about the package. So if you wanted to edit the weight, you could do that. You could read the weight directly from an electronic scale. You could manually change the weight and type that in there. The other thing that Starship is going to do is it's going to take as much information as it can from the Fishbowl system, but it's also going to store some additional information, shipment-specific information, inside of its own database. And we do that because um, there are fields that are required for shipping that aren't typically found in the shipment. Things like Schedule B or Harmonize Code in the case of international um, classes for LTL shipments. Um, so what we're doing here is we're pulling in as much as we can, we're folding in all the additional information about the inventory items, and we are populating that. So again, there's no additional data entry that needs to be happening in shipping. So when I highlight this mountain bike here, you'll see that my line item tab is appearing, 
And this happens to be a shipment that's going to Canada, so it is international. And over here on the international side now, you'll see that there's a Schedule B code. I can drill into this even further and show you all the details about this particular item. Also for international shipments, Starship has direct integration to the AES Direct, or what's now called ACE. Um, so if you do need to submit to the government your commodity level detail, you can do that electronically through Starship. So if I go onto my international tab and click on this EEI filing here, if one of these was not exempt, you'll see here that I have some options. So with this particular integration, Starship will push the data um, regarding these items out to the um, ACE portal um, so that you won't have to double entry those. Um, you could also let the carrier file on your behalf, but you're obviously going to get charged for that. So you could um, minimize your freight costs by doing it yourself. Um, and then Starship also has some functionality wrapped around the whole AES Direct um, or ACE integration um, where we can search for the um, emails to the email address where AES is sending you the ITN number, um, and we can automate the syncing of the ITN number to the shipment to even make that process more efficient. I can also rate shop from here. So if I do a rate shop, Starship is going to connect out to all the carrier modules that I have loaded in the system. It's going to access the carrier servers directly with my credentials to view my negotiated rates. So you'll see here that I have coming back a combination of small package and LTL. So Starship will rate across modes if you want it to. Um, it also supports on the UPS side, um, UPS ground with freight pricing. One of the, something popular that's you know um, we see customers going to who are shipping um, you know larger amounts, maybe not quite for LTL, but they can still get discounts going through the small package network. So that's supported. Um, Starship supports many of the UPS um, accessorials or um, options, contract options um, like the uh, ground with freight pricing, paperless invoice, um, world ease. So here you'll see that um, I have UPS standard to Canada. This is how it came over from the fishbowl shipment. I could from here decide to go another method if I wanted to. Um, you'll see that Starship's pulling out the delivery, um, delivery estimated delivery date and time, and then the charges. Now Starship has a couple different um, charges that you can view from the system. So with parcel carriers, you'll see list rates coming back. And then for the contract rate, this will be my negotiated rate with the carrier. LTL carriers typically you're not going to, or hopefully you're not going to be using their tear rates. Um, you'll have a discount like 70 or 80 percent against the, the most recent one. So um, usually with LTL carriers, you'll see the rate coming back in contract only. And then Starship also has something called applied freight. That's the freight that's going to go back into your fishbowl shipment if you want Starship to update the freight automatically for you. Um, and that freight can also include freight rules. So you can define freight rules based on any field that's coming over from Fishbowl. Um, so if you want to base it on the recipient name and you want to give this particular recipient a discounted freight charge, you can do that. Um, if you wanted to not charge freight under certain circumstances, you can do that as well. So in that instance, what we're trying to do is also reduce the amount of calculations and manual entry that's happening up in the front office typically um, to basically get everything going and, and ready to invoice your customer. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with my couple of boxes here. I'm going to do a ship and process. I can click this button up here or I can hit F5. Starship will communicate with the carriers, generate the barcoded shipping labels, and update Fishbowl in real time. What you're seeing here is an example of our smart label. This is a combination packing list plus shipping label. So this typically will print on 8.5 by 11 with this die cut 4 by 6 inch here. A lot of our customers will actually print the packing list directly to the thermal label printer where the shipping label is being printed. So you'll get two labels for each box. One you'll stick on the outside of the box, and then the packing list you can just put on the inside. And that way you can also take advantage of the free label stock that you can get from the carriers. So this is my package, one of two, that had those two items in it. And then my last box has the GPS bike mount here. 
And again, because this was an international shipment, Starship can also help automate the printing of all the international documents. So this is the shipper's letter of instruction. Um, basically, header-level information that's coming from Fishbowl is going to be at the top part of this uh, document, and then item-level detail will be in the body. This is the NAFTA CO. Starship also will print the um, standard certificate of origin if it's um, going to a country other than Canada or Mexico. Um, so that's all set up in the inventory item that I wanted to print the NAFTA CO in the case of um, Canada or Mexico. Otherwise, you can always print the standard. It's just up to you and your requirements. And as we mentioned earlier, many of these documents have similar requirements, header level information coming directly from Fishbowl at the top, and all of the um, item level or commodity detail in the body. commercial invoice. Starship also supports the commercial invoice with letterhead for those countries that require it. You just basically import your logo and um, Starship will print it when it's, when it's required. And just a note on that also, I mean, usually those labels and documents will be printing out um, directly to the printers. I have them coming up on screen here so that you can actually view them from a demoing perspective. Um, but usually they're just going to be printed out. The um, shippers will use those, combine those with the shipments, and then be ready to ship their next fishbowl shipment. So before I go back into Fishbowl to show you how the Fishbowl um, shipment was updated, I just want to show you um, one other utility that comes with Starship. It's called the um, email notification. Um, what's nice about the email notification in Starship is that it can be um, accessed directly um, and sent directly in real time. So um, when I just refreshed here, this is my um, shipment that um, I just processed going to um, Andrea. So this email address came directly from the fishbowl shipment. You can also set up other emails. So if you wanted your sales team to always receive an email, you could do that. Um, and this is going to be the outbound ship notification email. So Starship does also support the um, carrier notifications that may come um, directly from the carrier, like for shipment exceptions or delivery notices. Um, so if you wanted to, you could use a combination of Starship's outbound shipment notification as well as the carrier's inbound emails. And you can set those inbound emails to go out to your salespeople or your sales team so they can be proactive with customer service and notifying your customers if for some reason their shipment is going to be delivered late. But the, um, the nice thing with, um, with our email notification here, obviously you can brand it to however, you know, whatever you want to brand it to your own company. Um, I've seen some of our customers actually use um, images that look very similar to their websites, the header and the footer. Um, the other thing that you're going to be able to do is give your customer granularity on what was included in the shipment. And with having the fishbowl integration, since you can know the item to box level detail, you can literally tell them the tracking number for this package, the items that were in that box, so they know exactly what you shipped out and they can be expecting these two packages. You can also send them back to your website and give them promo offers. In Starship, you have the ability to create an unlimited number of templates and then create rules around those templates. So if you wanted to create different promos for different time periods, you could do that. Okay, let's go take a look at Fishbowl and see how that shipment got updated. So I'm just gonna open up Fishbowl. I'm gonna go into the 55 and when I go into this order you'll see here that I had the two cartons with those items in it and if I highlight this carton here you'll see here's the tracking number so tracking number gets automatically updated so your people in the front office know exactly what that is um, and then the cost gets also updated here same with carton 2 tracking number and cost Okay, that's all I really had for the Starship demo. I'm going to pass it back to Adrian. Thank you, Caroline. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen just so that we can have the contact information up here while we go through the questions. 
Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Uh, we do have quite a few questions here. Thank you everybody for your input. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with a question from Ivy. Thank you, Ivy. So, uh, what is the difference between Starship and Ship Gear? Hi, this is Caroline. I guess that one's for me. Good question. Um, so, Ship Gear is our, our middleware um, solution that works between uh, QuickBooks and the carrier supplied systems such as UPS and FedEx. Um, and post office. Um, Shipgear is going to be um, single carrier, so I mean you, you'll be in all three solutions if you ship all three carriers. Um, whereas with Starship, you're going to have one user interface for all your carriers. Also, if you're looking to integrate to Fishbowl, Starship is the only um, shipping solution that um, integrates with Fishbowl, so you want to go in that direction for Fishbowl integration, um, LTL integration. Um, line items, all the things that I showed you with that Canadian shipment um, are all things that, um, you know, Starship is able to do for you that Shipgear um, currently does not support. So Shipgear is really header level only. And then um, the uh, all the documents and, and that type of thing. So. And we have another question. Uh, this looks like it's a question for you, Jeannie. Uh, so, if an order is placed in QuickBooks, how do we know that the item is available if Fishbowl is running separately? Okay, well, we do not take orders in QuickBooks. When we're, we're in a Fishbowl QuickBooks environment, all the orders are inside Fishbowl. It's so a push need... from. We're just pushing dollars from Fishbowl to QuickBooks. We actually stop even using the item list that's in QuickBooks. So that goes for accounts receivable and all of that functionality okay. is also in? So the act of shipping in Fishbowl pushes an invoice to QuickBooks. So QuickBooks is, AR is managed in QuickBooks and accounts payable is managed in QuickBooks but it's using a generic item, FB underscore item. And with QuickBooks Enterprise 2017, has there been any issues? Between the integration between Fishbowl and QuickBooks? No. And then we have another question here. Are the details, in parentheses, cost of shipping, put on the sales order? Correct. So if you've got carton-based shipping set up, that shipping cost will be written back to the sales order and invoiced to the customer. And we have a question about EDI. Uh, we are a supplier for Home Depot, and we use SPS Commerce for EDI. Mm -hmm. Are there any Correct. relationships with EDI providers as far as an integration? So um, I'm going to take that, Gene, and then maybe you can um, add to that if you want to. We Starship does have direct integrations to um, EDI solutions. Usually in the QuickBooks space, we're working with the Hydrant True Commerce team, um, where Starship sends True Commerce Transaction Manager um, an XML file that contains all of the shipment details so that they can generate the ASN transaction that goes to the trading partner. Starship can also generate the 128 labels at the time of shipment, which can um, make the workflow between you know, the shipment and EDI um, pieces a little uh, more streamlined. Usually with the 128 labels, you're sometimes <coughs> trying to um, connect those to the right boxes after the fact, and there are some, can be some errors going on there, and it just takes a while. So um, from that regard, Starship does have um, various integrations to EDI systems. SPS and, and Fishbowl do work together, as does True Commerce and Fishbowl. So you have some options there. And then, mm -hmm. uh, can you sell negative in Fishbowl? Absolutely not. Okay. Cannot sell what we don't have. <laughs> And then there's an additional note from Nicola. Thanks, Nicola, for this question. QB 2017 does not let you anymore. That's an additional note. You, 
actually in QB 2017, I think it was actually 2015 or 16, it's a module option that you can you, you, that you can set, a preference you can set in QuickBooks to not allow a negative. And then we have a question from Ken. Thank you. Uh, does the system integrate with Amazon and eBay? Okay, Fishbowl can can integrate with both Amazon and eBay. And Starship also does. So if if you are um, getting those in from Fishbowl um, from Amazon or eBay, um, we can also ship as like an use those as an extension is what we call it. So as long as the um, order ID is coming into Fishbowl, we can map that into Starship, and Starship can actually send the um, tracking information over to Amazon in real time as at the same time as updating Fishbowl. So if you need that real-time um, connection um, directly after shipping, you can do that as well in Starship. So you have options there too. Perfect. And does Fishbowl integrate with Shopify? Yes, there are integrations between Fishbowl and Shopify. And that looks like we have a custom development question for Terabyte. Is Terabyte able to write a 3PO integration to a fulfillment house of our selection? We do it, we do it all the time. I how, have two or three 3PO integrations happening right now. And how do we bring on Starship once we have this 3PO integration written for us? Okay, so if we're using a 3PO, to do the shipping, they're going to do their own shipping, right? So what we have is we have our inventory in that location, which is the 3PL location, and the 3PL shipping out, of decrementing that inventory. Whereas if we have doing some of our own shipping, then we'd want uh, Starship. But very seldom do people have both methods of shipping. 3PL and, you know, shipping directly on their own. And I did want to remind the audience that we do have a poll up. And if you could just take a moment to answer this poll, that would be awesome. Uh, are you interested in learning more about any of the following, either Fishbowl Inventory or Starship? And you can answer both, too. So I see that 58% of you have voted, so thank you for that. And then we have another question from Steve. We have several QuickBooks portals in Right Networks, which is in the cloud. Will these integrate with the cloud? And does it matter that we have several QB portals? Okay, so when we're dealing with a hosting company like Right Networks, we can only put software on Right Networks that Right Networks approves of. So Right Networks does host Fishbowl. Uh, Carolyn, does Right Networks host uh, Starship? No, it doesn't. Um, we usually go through um, another hosting provider, go to my ERP. Um, that's one of the many out there, but we've had good luck with those guys because they're very familiar mm -hmm. with um, this type of um, scenario. So we usually recommend them as another option to Right Networks. Yeah, I find Right Networks frustrating because they limit the software you can put on their server because it's a shared server environment. I think people are much better served when they have a dedicated box and a lot more control over what the software they want to use. And we have a question from Phil. Uh, what is the cost of each? So on the Starship oh. side, it's um, let me just I'll go through that and I'll let you answer, Jean. Sorry. Um, okay. We actually have a base um, product and then um, we have um, other modules both for the carrier as well as the seats. So um, we, you know, definitely get in contact with us if you're interested in learning more. We can do a little discovery call with you and figure out exactly what you need so that we can give you a quote on um, what the Starship piece would be. Okay, so Fishbowl comes essentially in two flavors, uh, distribution and manufacturing, and the pricing is based on concurrent users, um, meaning how many people are in the system at the same time. 
So I wasn't prepared to answer fishbowl pricing. Let me grab my price here. So for five users is around $8,000. Can you repeat that, Jeannie? You are timing out a little bit, um, but now you're Sorry. Uh, five user fishbowl distribution is around $8,000. Okay. And that's a one-time fee. And then just, just for comparative purposes, a five user fishbowl manufacturing would be about 10500 and Jeannie, would you have options for leasing and the benefits of leasing? Do you work with any leasing providers? Yes. And we have, we, but you know, this kind of leasing is a, a finance lease, so it's essentially a loan. And so you could roll in Starship and Fishbowl too into that? Mm -hmm. Or any, any yeah. other services and stuff? Okay. Um, is there a problem with sales tax through Avalara when using Fishbowl? Not anymore. Avalara completely integrates with Fishbowl now, which is exciting. Perfect. We've been asking for that feature for a long time. And is there a general support plan provided annually or included in the price of Fishbowl? Thank you, Frank. In, in Fishbowl, the first year support is included in the price. And then continuing support is optional. It runs at approximately 20% uh, of purchase price. And I see that 70% of you have voted. I'm going to leave this up for a second or two longer. I'm going to close it out and then share the results. So if you could just take a last minute chance at uh, ta uh, answering this poll. We greatly appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close it out and share the results. So it looks like 44% of you are interested in Fishbowl and 75% of you are interested in Starship. Thank you so much, Jeannie and Caroline, for your presentations. Very informative. And uh, I have the, you should be able to see my slide with the contact information. We did record this webinar, and you will be receiving a follow-up email with a link to the recording. And we will also provide the contact information as well. And uh, we will be following up with you, everybody accordingly. Uh, let me just check real quick and see if we have any more questions. Is there any uh, custom reporting that you can provide, Jeannie, uh, with both Fishbowl and Starship? Well, we, we do custom reports for Fishbowl. Um, I don't know what data we'd be looking for to, to data mine out of Starship, but we certainly can. Right reports there. Carolyn, does Starship use Crystal or anything in particular? Yeah, well, Starship um, stores its data in a Microsoft SQL database. Um, you will have access to a dashboard, which is basically a browser-based view of the shipment history. Um, and our dashboard does give you access to various reports that are kind of canned reports. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, have, you have a special report that Starship doesn't have out of the box. Um, you can always access it via Crystal, just go direct to the database. There's lots of views in our database to use. So, um, Jeannie, between you and our support services, I'm sure we could get something going. Well, thank you to so much for uh, your presentations and thank you audience for spending this time with us. We know your time is hard to come by uh, and we're hopeful that we can help you automate some of your processes and then for the sake of time and uh, thank you so much again we'll be sending out a follow-up email with everybody's contact information and just let us know if you have any questions have an awesome day Jeannie Caroline would you like to offer any closing comments oh thanks everybody for joining this afternoon and thanks Jean for um, telling us a little more about fishbowl and I'd like to thank everybody as well all right, everybody, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye.